Hey, it's Dry Bear. Today, we're gonna talk about some tips for lethal company that can help you succeed in getting your loot out and being able to meet your quota. A lot of these are optimizations and tricks of the trade that can help you survive some really tricky situations. The first one requires that you know that you can walk up to a piece of furniture inside of your ship and reposition it anywhere that you want. And you wanna take advantage of this by creating a barricade at the front of the ship, which can block the eyeless dogs from getting in and taking out you or your teammates. Now, is pretty much for eyeless dogs as the electric bees the circuit bees will go right through this barricade and obviously the forest giants can't go through either if you ever piss off a baboon hawk enough for them to want to come inside this will work too but the most common use for this is to avoid having the eyeless dogs into your ship what i like doing is taking the shelf and putting it on the right side right next to the entrance and to make this work the most conveniently and efficiently i like offsetting them bring the small file cabinet next to the shelf but bring it back enough so that you can stand adjacent to the shelf while still being in the ship and then force yourself to jump over the file cabinet the reason for this is that if you put them both in the doorway it'll be very impossible for you to get over the gap conveniently or effectively so bring back the file cabinet just to the very edge of the shelf so that you can walk into the ship be in the ship and then jump over the file cabinet to safety and i can tell you since i play this game almost entirely solo all the way through titan and beyond that this has saved my life many times. The next tip revolves around the toys that make noise. The loudest one and the most annoying one is the robot toy, the toy robot that you can pick up on most maps. This won't show up on low value maps, but when you get to mid or high tier value maps, this will start showing up and they are worth quite a lot. The problem with the robot toy is once you pick it up, it starts yammering and yapping non-stop, which not only can make it so you are at a disadvantage trying to listen for sound cues and for monsters that might be hunting you, but it also attracts any monsters that are drawn to sound. Any monster that's sound sensitive will react to the robot toy. However, there is a workaround if you know how to do it. All sound-based toys, including the robot toy, can be switched off if you have fast fingers. <laughs> The way I recommend doing this is drop all of your items on the ground and then pick up the uh, a new item so you have at least one item in your inventory, then pick up the robot toy. And there's a brief second where if you pick up the robot toy and then swap to another item right as it enters into your hand, the sound won't start playing. So you can have the robot toy on your person without it playing its noise. This takes a little practice, but once you get used to it, you can do it first try every single time and have all these loud toys on you without drawing enemies that are drawn to sound and this too has saved my life many times next is a trick around the circuit bees these are such a run killer for so many new players they walk out and before they even enter the facility they see the circuit beehive on the ground they pick it up and they end up killing themselves or their party and the big thing is you end up getting a lot of money for these hives but i've seen a lot of people lose their life because they're trying to get this hive now a couple being about things about the circuit bees for anyone who's new if you pick up the hive the bees will hunt for it constantly until they land on a hive the bees always seek to be on a hive which means if there's no hive nearby they'll just wander around the map attacking everyone violently however if they do find a hive they will stand on it and defend it which means if this hive is inside of your ship i'm sure this has happened to you one of your friends say hey guys i found a hive they bring it into the ship drop it right by the terminal and now all of a sudden the bees come in and make their home inside of your ship and now you can't go inside the ship at all so my number one recommendation for farming hives and getting the gold or the money from them is to pick them up at the very end of the run and run them into your ship and then take off as you're leaving the planet so you can actually make good value out of it. But there's another way to do this if you want to grab the hive at the beginning or the middle way through the run. And that is that the circuit bees will aggro by line of sight, which means if they can't actually see you, they're blocked by a wall or a tree, they won't aggro even if you're very close to you. So the way you do this is you pick up the hive and you bring it to the back of the ship on the railing that's outside of the ship, but it's out of line of sight of anyone. And you want to do this smartly so you're not 
passing by this, wherever the sh side of the ship that doesn't get passed by on, depending on the moon that you're on, that's not a frequently trafficked area, you can put the hive there on the ship. And the trick here is that when the ship takes off, the bees that are on the hive will be left behind because the hive is an item, it'll take off with the ship, but the bees are not, which means that when the ship starts taking off, the bees will be extracted from the hive, the hive is left behind, and you can just pick it up yourself. Another cool thing is that as long as you're on the ship somewhere, whether you're out on the railing or inside the ship, when you reach orbit, you'll be teleported inside to the cockpit and be just fine. So as long as you're on the ship for any reason, outside or inside, you're good to go. So the way this trick works is you pick up the hive, put it on the far side of the ship that you never traffic, go on the back railing or on the opposite side that you come from, depending on how it's laid out based on the moon, and just never go to that side of the ship. Then when you're ready to go, take off. And as soon as you take off, run outside and pick up the hive, which is now free of bees and hold it in your hand. The reason you wanna do this is that if the hive is on the ground outside the ship, when you get to orbit, you will lose the hive. But when you you get teleported into the ship, you will be teleported in with anything that you're holding. So you can grab the hive, hold it in your hand, you'll automatically be teleported inside of the cockpit, or you can just pick it up and walk into the cockpit if you do it fast enough. Which means that you can take a pair of two people, grab the, the hive at the very beginning of the run, put it on the back railing or on the opposite side of the ship that you walk by, depending on your layout, and then you'll have it for the end of the run without having to worry about it. The safest way to grab a hive is with two people, have one person run the bee away from the hive first, have the second person come in from behind, grab the hive and run away, put it in the ship or put it on the railing and you're good to go. The next tip is around using the terminal and the dev, who is obviously an excellent programmer, loves regular expressions and shorthand expressions. So you can actually use shorthand expressions for almost everything you do on the terminal, as long as you type enough letters to signify what you're trying to activate inside of the terminal. For moons, this means you just need to type the first three letters. So A, a S S M A R T I T and even E X P are enough to denote which moon you're trying to go to. You also don't need to type open or close when you're trying to interact with either a landmine, a turret, or a secured door. You just need to type the moniker for that item and it will toggle whatever it's on. If it's a landmine or it's a turret and you type X6 or T4, it'll just turn off whatever is on. And if it's a secured door, it'll just toggle its state. So if it's open, it'll close. If it's closed, it'll open. You don't have to type open. You don't have to type disable. You just have to type the moniker itself and it'll just toggle its state. And these shorthand notations are great for your command share person that's staying in the ship, using the walkie talkie and guiding the team around that wants to move quickly and efficiently through it. And I'll remind you a tip that I had in a previous video, but it does apply here. You can also type in open terminal and view monitor. View monitor brings up the monitor screen inside of the terminal. So you have it all in one place, which is super convenient. The next tip is to make excellent use of railings. Most of the pathing and reactions for the AI in this game is very two-dimensional, which means they try to find a path directly to you. And when you add elevation to this, things get a little squirrely. So by jumping up on railings, navigating over bookshelves and going over nightstands and things like that, you can actually trick a lot of monsters to stopping their pursuit or pausing and being unable to attack you. Notably creatures like thumpers or bunker spiders can very easily be defeated by jumping up onto a railing and bashing them with a shovel. But this is also useful for outdoor monsters. Say you're on a, a map like Titan. If you jump up on the stair railing, you can react to some of the outdoor monsters as well by navigating through it or having them follow you up to the top of the staircase, jumping over the railing to a bottom level and running down. And you can actually kite and matador your way around mobs as long as you use elevation to trick their pathing. The next tip started as a beginner tip, and I did mention it briefly for some of my beginner guides, but it actually has become more of an advanced tip the better you get at the game and the more you have to use alternate entrances and exits for some of the moons. And that is that you are effectively a Skyrim horse and you can slide and glide down steep elevation on any map that you want. Now at a basic level on maps of like Assurance or March or Vow, you can very easily get down from some of the higher areas without taking any fall damage. But this is actually extremely useful for maps like Titan or Rend, where you might be stuck out in a very weird spot depending on where the fire escape is located. Even maps like March at mid-tier have plenty of fire escapes that have a lot of ledges around them and can be spread out. When you get two or three fire escapes in a situation where there's four 
Taurus Giants outside, you may actually want to use that slope to your advantage so that you can disengage from outdoor monsters that might be chasing you, or you can use it to drop items down the slope and move it in different ways. The next tip is in the same idea and that it starts as a beginner tip, but mastering it does bring you to more of an advanced level. And that is your current weight affects how fast you can move. And when you first start playing the game, you don't really care. You just fill up your inventory, run back to the ship and drop items. But again, as a solo player, I've been punished many times by trying to take most of my heavy items in one load, like one run, or by not spreading them out in proper ways or using the ones where you can hold in two hands in the right order. Not only that, but some of the monsters like baboon hawks or earth leviathans or hoarding bugs, you can very easily outmaneuver, but only if you can move fast enough to do so. Which means if you're overloaded, anything over 50 pounds, pounds on your total weight, you might think about dropping something to maneuver around it, or especially on flooded maps where you might be drowning. I've seen people drown with a full inventory of metal objects and they're at like 80 to 100 pounds of weight and they just drown because they couldn't move fast enough to get out of the way. So when you get a full load, I usually try to do at least two or three full inventory runs per run to be able to get enough money to hit quota. The goal is to spread out your items, grab lightweight items with heavy items so you can have a pretty even load so you can still run if you need to. And also keep in mind that not only do you move slower, but you also consume stamina more aggressively with higher weight as well. Which means sprinting becomes a much more valuable resource when you have high weight limit as you will move slower and drain your stamina faster because of that weight. The next tip is around your minimum and maximum stamina. There are actually a punishment for running out of stamina and a bonus for getting to maximum stamina. And that is there is a grace period on either end of the bar where there, the bar won't move when it's trying to recover. So if you ever reach maximum stamina and start sprinting, there's a small window of time where that stamina won't drain, which means that sprinting at maximum stamina actually gives you a bit more of movement than you would get if you sprinted at 99% stamina. So it is worthwhile to let your stamina hit exact 100% maximum because it gives you a little bit more of a versus speed if you need it. But the opposite is true for 0% stamina as well. If your bar ever reaches zero completely, it will give you a little bit more of emergency stamina to keep running. But if you ever go to 0% stamina, there is a grace period before your stamina will start to recover. And so as you get better at the game, what you wanna do is start managing your stamina so that you never actually run out completely because it'll start regenerating immediately if you never hit zero. And if you have to, if you're moving into a dangerous area, you know, there's a bracken nearby, you know that there's a jester or there's a couple coil heads in the next room and you're going to need your stamina to manage properly. You want to make, make sure that stamina hits 100% so you get a little bit more use out of it. The next tip is around holding and managing your keys. The keys in Lethal Company allow you to open locked doors and you really want to manage how you use these and where you place them because you can get a lot of value out of them or you can completely waste them if you're not paying attention. Firstly, I recommend bringing keys from run to run and never selling them if you don't have to. They're not worth that much. It's like three to six and you don't really get a lot of value out of it, but it is super useful on some of the maps where you can get blocked out from some of the best loot on that map because you didn't have a key to open the door. I've had to end a run on Titan where the last room that I could reach on the Titan floor had like 1200 value in it and it was locked and I didn't have a key and I had to leave even though I was right there with an empty inventory ready to grab it. And the other thing to think about here too is the layout for each of the facilities is entirely random. And so what you can sometimes run into, actually more than sometimes often run into, is that you can find a locked door that has an alternate path around it, which means that you don't even need to open that door at all. You can just walk around the corner and walk by the door. This has probably happened to you. You probably think of a time this has happened to you already where you went to unlock a door and you realize that there was just a dead end on the other side of it, or you could walk around it and skip the door entirely, which means that key that you just used was completely wasted. Or if you go into the reactor rooms with the apparatus that are almost always two doors to enter, sometimes one door is locked and the other isn't, which means if you unlock the one locked door, even though you could have gone around to the second door and walked in for free, you wasted that key on that door specifically. So keep your keys from run to run, put them in storage so you have them ready because there are a lot of doors that you want to get through that have good value, especially on the higher level moons. And also check around the locked doors to make
make sure there wasn't an alternate path that gets around that door so you can save the key for something that might actually be blocking your path. Now you have it, some tips for Lethal Company. I hope you have a good time out there and get lots of loot and never die. If you found value in today's video, leave a like down below, leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people. And don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things.